this this time. All right, here we go. We're going to do better. All right, hit it. When I mention caving, I feel like this is what most readily comes to people's minds. A claustrophobic crawl with the weight of the earth pressing upon you. Incremental progress, only gained inch by inch. And while sometimes true, usually not so dramatic. Unlike a lot of other sports, there are no fastest times or rating systems. Not to say there isn't boasting of depths achieved, horrible crawls pushed, or daring climbs done. But keeping in mind the remoteness and difficulties of a rescue tends to keep progress more methodical. But what, what awaits beyond such obstacles? The beauty of formations, of course, the chance to be the first human eyes to peer into the blackness and to see something new. Also a sense of accomplishment as a team, pushing each other beyond your comfort zones. The history of Montana caving is long, from Paleo-Americans digging for ochre to miners searching for gold. In the 1920s, some bosones deposited this note and tobacco can beneath the flanks of Mount Blackmore here in the highlights for us to find 100 years later thinking we had found a new cave. But it's more than just exploration and looking around the next bend. Biology, climatology, and hydrology are just some of the reasons to head underground. One of the caving culture's greatest strengths is its multidisciplinary approach to the caving sciences, or what is known as speleology. Working in partnerships with governments and nonprofits, cavers are often the eyes and ears of these entities volunteering hundreds of hours underground gathering data on bats who contribute more than $680 million annually as pollinators and free pest control on Montana's agricultural lands. Winner of the 2010 and 2019 President's Environmental Youth Award, the Big Fork High School Cave Club was cre created to provide students with different opportunities through cave exploration. Using GIS and modern data gathering, they assist landholders in conserving cave resources. Traversing a cave is following the path of water, past or present. Caves in the karst landscape are conduits for surface water to the springs and aquifers beneath. Using biodegradable dyes, we assist hydrologists in understanding the flow path and patterns of these waters. But by far the most time consuming work we do is survey. As caves are explored and pushed beyond the margins of the map, knowing where you are and how to get back becomes paramount. Using laser instruments and hand-drawn sketches, a continuous map is extended throughout the cave. But as travel times... Whoa, what is going on here? As travel times increase from the entrance to the furthest reaches of the cave, underground camps are sometimes required. And these range from hammocks with cheerful illumination and playing cards to a damp shred of Tyvek on a muddy bank with an emergency candle. Plan accordingly. With most of our caving happening in the far remote regions of the one million acre Bob Marshall Wilderness, hauling all this gear starts to add up and the use of any form of travel besides hiking becomes preferable. Pack rafting has quickly become a favorite and as Dustin shows here, adventure crocs required. And this is where one of the main players in wilderness caving emerges, the humble pack animal. It was realized early on that paying for the services of a mule skinner and his mules is much preferable to you hauling loads that quickly exceed a thousand pounds for a team over two weeks of caving. Gaining notoriety for being the deepest cave in the United States, Tears of the Turtle Cave is dismal. Predominantly a two to three foot wide crack it extends down 2,000 vertical feet over its two miles of passages. Noteworthy for the obscene amount of mud and general unpleasantness. The Silvertip Cave System has the distinction of having over a dozen entrances connecting its 10 miles of passages. Stories abound concerning 1970s deadbeats driving up from Austin and living rent-free in the wilderness while caving hard in double denim and enormous beards. Sensationally called a killer with a hair trigger by an early explorer after he nearly perished pushing the boundaries of gear and expertise at the time, 
Lost Creek Siphon is a 700 foot deep continuous cascade of snow melt down a series of waterfalls. This is one of the most active, dangerous, and dynamic caves in the state. And here Montana's largest underground river flows through Green Fork Falls Cave, emerging in the sunlight as an 80 foot waterfall from an entrance just as tall. A large part of who I am today is the result of over a decade of mapping and exploring its miles of passages. And these are but a snapshot of what we know. With such vast expanses and with some entrances measuring but a foot square, the possibilities are near endless. With 50 years of caving in the Montana wilderness behind us, I'm sure there are still hundreds more still ahead of us. But one thing I can count on is that I will continue to meet characters along the way. It takes a certain mindset to accept the risk of caving and its rewards. My friendships from the caving community are my strongest, shared suffering and compromise. To succeed in your esoteric goals tend to forge some strong bonds. Standing on a mountain, approaching dusk, a well-traveled French speleologist was beside himself, that not a single visible light was seen and was exhilarated by the realization that he could encounter an animal that might make a dinner of him. As he waxed poetic, I realized how lucky we are as Americans to have such a resource. Working and recreating underground while following the guidelines of Leave No Trace will hopefully preserve these caves for all future Montanans. Whether you join us or adventure on your own, please also follow these guidelines if you do decide to explore the wilderness beneath. Thank you.